Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lions TV. Welcome to the match preview of our game tomorrow at 7.45 against Wolves. And Wolves are going to be a tough test, you guys. With how I like to structure these match previews, I start off by giving my thoughts and opinions on the press conference. Then I give the predicted lineup. Then I get into the tactics of our opposition. And then finally, I end things by talking about how we can overcome our opposition team and things we can do to win the game. But you guys, if you like what I do, you like the content, smash that like button. Help me get more than 500 likes for today's video and press the bell notification button as well to stay tuned to all things Blue Lines TV. Getting straight into things, starting with the press conference and there were quite a few interesting points made by Sari today. He confirmed that there are no injury problems for the game tomorrow. But what was interesting was how he was talking about, you know, certain players that he would like to see sign new contracts. Now, before I get into that, he said that he was happy that Aspie did commit to a new contract. He said that he's an important player for the team. And after that, he spoke about Louise and Sesk and he spoke about how important they are for the team. He said that they're both leaders and they're two players that are very hard to replace. Now this gives us an indication in how Sari likes his team squad dynamics to be. It seems like he likes a few older experienced players for teammates to look up to. And also Sari came out with his first criticism of the board. Now it's not a major one but it's very subliminal and very small. And he spoke about the fact that the club's actual policy of not really giving very big contracts to players above 30 can be a bit of a hindrance. He said that, of course, these guys will be hard to replace. So it doesn't really make any sense, really, stop these guys from leaving. Now, in my opinion, I can understand why Chelsea don't mind letting Cesc go. I mean, the guy's on like 200k a week. He's barely playing any football. You can save a lot of money if you sell him. But I think when it comes to David Luiz, I think with Luiz now, he is effectively the new John Terry for this new squad that we do have. He's looked up to very highly. He's very popular. And I think that he's a very important figure to have at the club because he's also very important for the team. So it would be very disappointing if Luiz never got a new contract because of a very rigid policy set by the club. Sari actually criticised Alonso. Again, when people were having a massive go at him, making some comments in regards to Kante, I think all of us knew that, well, he's going to make comments to any player he wants because the guy is the manager. And he said that even though he understands that Alonso might have had a small back injury, that doesn't really take away from the fact that Alonso was very poor. And Sari himself said that Alonso knows himself that he wasn't good. So could this possibly mean that Alonso might not play the game tomorrow? In my thoughts on the predicted lineup part, right after the press conference part. And to end the press conference talk, Sari spoke about Ruben. He said that Ruben has improved over the past two games. He's liking what he's seeing. He's getting a bit better. But when a journalist asked Sari if he could be starting the game tomorrow, Sari was still quite coy. And the impression I got from this was that even though Ruben is improving and he is getting used to what Sari wants, Ruben might not still be at that level just yet in terms of the tactical understanding of the game to really start to become the first choice number eight. Now, moving on to the predicted lineup part of the video. Now, there's one thing we need to understand. This month alone, we have nine games. That's basically going to be a game every three days. That's too much. Now, Sari probably knows this himself. This isn't Serie A. You're not going to get a month's holiday. We play through the Christmas period. So what Sari needs to do now is to rotate. And the game against Wolves tomorrow is a perfect game to start rotating the players and allowing some of the squad players to get game time. Because at the end of this week, We've got Man City and I'm sure that Sari has his eye on that game. So it makes sense that rotation is going to be in place for the game tomorrow. Now, I'm taking a bit of a risk with my lineup for tomorrow. Something tells me that Alonso might not play. And I have a feeling that Sari might consider using Zappa Costa down the left-hand side. But ideally, I think it would be great to see Emerson play. I think that this is the perfect game, especially against the opposition we're facing. I'm going to get into the tactics later on in the third part of the video. But let's just say that wide play is going to be very key and important in trying to stop the stuff that Wolves do. And I'm thinking as well, come on, I can't see Sari using Ruben against Man City. But I think against Wolves, after his current form, I think that he deserves to start in the number eight position. And for the front three, I've gone for the same front three we used against Fulham. I thought that it was quite interesting to see. And I have a feeling that Morata is going to play more of an important part against Man City. Now, as you guys saw from the title of this match preview, when we play Wolves tomorrow, it's really going to be a great match in the sense that we can actually reflect on. It's going to be a great match where we can reflect and contrast the Chelsea of old 
and the new Chelsea we're becoming. Now, what I mean by that exactly is last season under Conte, they use a 3-4-3. Wolves use a very similar approach. Now, now Wolves have a few details of their own that Conte didn't really use, but the fundamentals are actually quite similar. And I think this game tomorrow is really going to highlight the fact that we needed this new tactical intervention in the team because we needed to lose this kind of pragmatic spirit that we've had over the past few years. And I think that the 3-4-3 under Conte was testament to that due to how rigged and structured things were. And I think the game tomorrow is really going to show us why we needed this new style in the team. And this game tomorrow is going to show us why we needed a new tactical culture at the club and why Sarri's methods are the right way to go in the future for Chelsea compared to the pragmatic nature of previous managers. Now, here's the key details that you guys will want to know on Wolves. Now, yes, it's obvious they do use a 3-4-3. Now, here's a few details in regards to who Wolves are and what we can expect from them. Now, it's obvious they use a 3-4-3. They use a 3-4-3 and off the ball when they're defending, the wingers will drop deep to make a 5-4-1, similar to what Conte used to do last season. But there's a few fundamental differences between Conte and Suso. Now, with Conte teams, he liked to play through the middle. And the reason why he liked this was because if you lost possession, it meant that the core in the middle of the pitch was still going to be strong. It wasn't going to move. And it allowed you to keep your shape and create, hopefully, more counter-attacking chances. But with Suso, what he prefers to do is focus all of his plays down the wide areas because Wolves have a lot of very talented, fast, tricky wingers with guys like Adame and Costa. Another small difference is the fact that when Wolves play out, yes, they do the same thing Chelsea did where the back three will spread apart. But with Luis, the guy playing centrally in the back three, under Conte, he would play the sweeper role. He would actually drop deep behind the defence. And with Wolves, they like to have Bowley on the ball. And he has the licence at times to push into midfield with the ball. But one thing Wolves have been very good at is their ability to keep their defensive structure and their shape. And that's one of the key things made by the 3-4-3 formation. That's because it doesn't allow you to actually shift your central positions much. You can keep your core very strong. And using this type of shape, as well as using a mid block and a low block, means that you force your opponents to play balls in front of you. You make it half of the opposition to play between the lines. And the game that Wolves played against Man City, where they got a draw against them, was really testament to that. Now, yes, City were getting on the ball quite a lot at times, but if you look at the central areas, they weren't really able to damage Wolves as much. And they really limited the amount of times guys like Sterling, uh, Aguero, Jesus, etc. were able to get on the ball. Now, with how Wolves use their two midfield players, with guys like Martinho and Neves, they really keep their tactical discipline by staying in position all the time. Their job's really to literally spray passes, play the four passes to their wingers, and to not stray too far from their defence. Honestly, I can get into so much detail with Wolves, but honestly, I can really speak about Wolves even longer, but I need to streamline things, and really the threat we need to expect from Wolves tomorrow is obviously out wide. Now, you can imagine with the skill, pace, and trickery of their wingers, they're very adept at beating men one-on-one. -on -one. We've seen how Wolves have played against the big teams so far this season. They've played very, very well. They've stepped their game up. And they've made it very difficult. And they've always been very unlucky in those games because they have created the chances to actually get the three points. But due to the limitations of the players, not really being great finishers, that's really stopped them. Obviously, Wolves use a wing-back system. And when you use a wing-back system, you need to get your wing-backs in the game, get them in midfield because if they're not able to help support the play offensively, it means that you become susceptible to counter-attacks down your sides and it really limits your counter-attacking threat because what it does then is it forces the wide players to have to move in central together to really try and find someone to link up with. And if you're doing that, you're playing in the hands of the opposition team because then you allow them to push more men forwards and then you really don't have any counter-attacking threat because you're literally stuck in your own half. Now, Wolves don't really struggle with this as much due to the fact that they like to focus their build-up play out wide in those areas. But the second most important thing Wolves like to do is get their wing backs into the game. Now, a few times you will see their wingers actually dropping into the half space areas to really allow the spaces out wide for their wing backs to go up. And in possession on the ball, Wolves are actually pretty decent. But against Man City, and I have a feeling it's the same tactical approach they're going to use against us. They're actually more defensive. They use more of a 5-4-1 from the start of the game. And their game plan was to stop the space is between the lines. It was to force City to play in front of them, reduce the impact of the front three, allowing Wolves to attack the spaces behind City's fullbacks. And that's how they were able to get quite a lot of good attacking joy against them. 
Now, how can we beat Wolves tomorrow? Now, the most key important thing we need to do is to limit the overloads in the wide areas and to try and reduce the threat of their wingers going 1v1 against Aspie and our left back. And that's because, yes, one thing we're still struggling a tiny bit is that transition when we've lost possession of the ball and we're trying to defend against a counter-attack. And that's something that Wolves are very good at exploiting. And really to do that, we need to force their wing backs back in their own half. And I think defensively off the ball too, I feel that our wide players need to tuck in midfield a tiny bit more to try and stop those passing channels for those direct balls straight to Wolves wingers. And of course on the ball, I think it's going to be key that we get guys like Hazard on the ball in the half spaces because when you're in in that area in particular, you know, the space between the opposition fullback and the defender, what it does is it really stops both these guys from really getting at you because what you're trying to do is create 1v1s and thus you're creating the overloads, really exploit them and try and create the spaces between the lines in which you can really just disrupt their entire shape. Now, um, honestly, I feel like I'm really geeking out with this match preview. I can honestly go on and on and on because I think it's going to be a very tactically fascinating game. Hopefully, I can try and find the time to potentially do a tactics review of the game after because as i've said it's going to be like playing against the chelsea of last season and then that's the only way to really respect the good things and the bad things that conte provided with this system but anyway i think one advantage that we do have now compared to last season is the fact that we can keep possession of the ball better in the opposition's half and that's because when you've got guys like Jorginho being the regista and you've got the two other midfield players you know pushing forward occupying those spaces, you know, to try and, um, you know, create those overloads out wide. It just makes for easier passing connections. And that's how we're able to get our best players on the ball even more. And that's why possession's been so good this season. Now, I'm going to give my match prediction and I'm thinking it's going to be two things. We're either going to draw against Wolves or I think that we will win 3-1 or 2-0. It is going to be a hard game. Um, especially as the games do go on and if Wolves aren't losing the game then they can introduce guys like Adama late on you know how many times have we seen already against the big teams this season all they do is pump a pass straight to Adama and he just carries and steamrolls the ball straight through everyone straight to the opposition goal it's a matter of time before this guy starts scoring from these types of opportunities he's creating for himself but I do believe we're good enough to stop that wide threat that Wolves do possess once we stop that, we get the advantage in the game. And I think that we can do that against them tomorrow. But you guys, that's going to be the end for today's match preview. Please like, comment and subscribe. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. Signing out.